In this episode of Painting the Island, I would like to show the world of compassion dogs and how important they are. Let me introduce you to Blair Meadows and his wonderful dog and star of the show, Farah, the veteran assist service dog. Hello and welcome to the Lesson Center Academy of Music and Art in Parksville. Today is a special day because I have a special guest, Blair, Blair Meadows, with his dog Farah. First I have to tell you this, lots of clients or viewers were asking me, Michael, can you do a dog? Can you paint a dog? And of course we can do that, but I was thinking, which dog? And suddenly I remembered my top student on guitar, Blair, with his wonderful doggy, Farah. Blair, can you tell us about Farah? Yes. Uh, Farah came to me uh, when she was uh, eight weeks old uh, as a puppy and uh, I, since I'm a veteran and uh, I used to have post-traumatic stress, uh, she was trained in, with, with the Vancouver Island Compassion Dogs and, and to, uh, to become a, the first certified small dog uh, under the BC Alberta Guide Dog Program and she's done amazing things. She's helped me out so, uh, so much and uh, thank you very much Michael. You're welcome. And to honor all veterans, and especially you, of course, I'm going to make a portrait of Farah. Farah, you're going to get famous. And you know our motto? Let's create a masterpiece. Welcome in my studio. To save some time, I already made a sketch of Farah. But the real painting is gonna start now, so, at work. Yes, yeah, so and before we start, my excuses for the bad sound during the intro, but you probably will understand that talking behind those masks causes issues with sound recording. And we look a bit like Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker with those masks, but we want to obey the rules and take safety as the highest precaution. I started with the background and as Farah has beautiful brown eyes, I let that come back in the background layers. So if you do a husky with blue eyes, put a bit of blue or blue grey into the background also. This is a golden tip for all portrait artists out there, keep it in mind. As the light comes from the left, we need a kind of dark halo behind her head for a good contrast. I know it looks weird, but it looks good also. Then we make a kind of gradient with a dark ochre tone, maybe mixed with a bit of burnt sienna. And as you have painted with me before, you know that with an ochre tone, I mean yellow ochre, allies in crimson and titanium white. And as a brush for this background, I always like to use the famous one inch brush from our good friend Bob. It is my favorite brush, but keep in mind it's a lot of work to clean this little guy. Usually it takes me 10 minutes to clean him inside out. And that's important because if you don't do it, he's gone. On the right side we use a lighter tone, adding more titanium white to the first ochre tone. This will be the shadow part of Farah. Her back will be dark and the background light. This is how we create contrasts. I would like to put Farah on a black or dark surface with a reflection effect. So. I use a very dark grey with a bit of burnt sienna to kill the dark. Otherwise the tone is dead and the background takes a bit of the reflection also, that's why it's better to do this. I raise the horizon a tiny bit because I need more space behind her body. Between the legs we have to add some color too. With the lightest ochre tone we wiggle a bit color downwards and then we clean the brush and fade the reflection softly in with no pressure on the bristles. We leave it alone for now as it needs another layer, but we can do that later. We put a bit of more light into the background and then I want to start with the eyes. 
It might sound strange to you, but I always start with the eyes, because if the eyes are good, the portrait is already halfway done. Farah has big round eyes, and her pupils are big too, because her eyes are always in the shadow of her upstanding front head hairs, or maybe we should call them eyebrows. After painting the dark pupils, we can use an ochre tone with a bit of burnt shanna and make it dark at the top and right under some light tone as a kind of pre-selection for the light. With a bit of middle tone grey, we can paint the under layer for the reflection light in the eyes. And I use a small round brush for that. Upon it we paint a highlight so that the dog is looking straight at you, straight in the eyes. Then we circle around the eyes with a combination of grey and yellow ochre to create a shadow mask in this part of the head. Like I said, it's all in the shadow. And with ochre I mean an ochre tone, that's a combination of ochre, Eliza and crimson and white and maybe with a little touch of the burnt shanna. Right from the start, I always try to create brush strokes in the right direction. This might sound weird, but in a fur, brush strokes are really important. We lean our hand on the palette stick to get more stability. And with the small brush strokes, we build up the fur layers. We can play a bit with light and dark, and then we can bring in the basic layer for the skull. The right technique is that you push up the bristles and then you will create a fantastic fur basic underlayer. Only this technique is extremely time consuming, so we can't speed up a bit. But I think you still can follow me easily, and yes it is the same technique all the way. Pushing up the bristles and try to use different color tones like light and dark all the time. And we start in the ear with a darker back layer. So with a lighter ochre tone and a small brush we can paint the lighter hairs in the ear. Which looks cute. And yes he looks a bit like Zorro but no worries it will all come together at the end. When you set up a portrait of your pet Whatever it is, a horse, a cat, a dog, a monkey, no, not for real. <laughs> Prepare yourself that the ground layers often look terrible. When my students paint an animal, they often get frustrated and disappointed with the first layers because it does look like nothing yet. But keep in mind that a painting is not a photograph, it's an impression of a number of colors which lead you to the final result. And if it's a di little bit different, well, it's okay. The most important is that we show the character of the subject. And as Farah is a very intelligent, lively personality, I started with a vivid background with lots of brush strokes with a loose touch going all the way. And this is the wonderful magic of painting. We can show the character by just doing certain brush strokes or colors. Like I said before, we keep a certain balance in the painting by using a small number of colors. Let's say maybe four or five, and this will fit perfectly by the dog. I think we use only yellow ochre, and nice and crimson, some greys, yellow and English red, and that's it. These techniques were done by the old masters and it was surprising how they created their masterpieces with only a few colors. Even very famous cat and dog painters like Henriette Rune Knip used a very limited palette with lots of result. But we can do the same, although we do our best. Let's give the lady a moustache. Yes, she got a very nice moustache and a little bit of a beard too. We start small and then give her that cute little underlip. 
and start blending it in with soft, light ochre tones. Then, with a soft makeup brush, we blend in the wet paint with soft brush strokes in the direction of the fur. Those makeup brushes are really fantastic for blending in, but don't overdo it. With too much pressure, you spoil the effect. Before we do anything else, let's do the official uniform of Farah. If Farah is on duty, she knows that she has to take care of Blair. I noticed that she doesn't take her eyes off him and follows every step wherever he goes. Isn't that amazing? So from the moment she wears her uniform, this little angel knows what to do. But after 6 o'clock or 7, I don't know, when it's taken off, she plays like any other dog, doing naughty things or whatever she likes. When Blair walked into our lesson center a few years ago, starting guitar lessons with much pleasure, I was also fascinated by his dog and amazed how they could train Farah like this. I never saw that before. Yes, Blair is by now a master dog trainer. And it seems that Farah is the smallest dog in Canada, fully certified and trained. Deep in my heart, I wished that my parents had a dog like that. They were both war victims and very, very damaged by all cruelties they experienced in the Second World War. My father was in war prison for four years, escaped, wandering through Russia, got wounded and saved by the liber liberators, but never came over it. He never healed and I saw him suffering. Just the same as my mother, life in Amsterdam in those days was really cruel. So a compassion dog like this might have saved their lives. This is why I decided to help a bit and make a special episode about these wonderful compassion dogs. Let me show you a bit more about this great item. Thanks to short television Jocelyn Madvin and Naimo, I received the upcoming short clip of Go Island, in which Blair and Craig tell how much these dogs mean for them. Take a break and watch this wonderful initiative. Come here. It's no secret dogs make great companions, and their love can be very healing. But the responsibility of caring for them can also be beneficial. You know, I was pretty reclusive and um, you know, you couldn't get me out of my place with a stick of dynamite in your hand. So to have Ace come into my life and, and he needs to go out. And I, like Greg, I isolated myself quite, uh, quite, quite a bit. And she, she demands that I get out. Stay. Greg and Blair are war veterans who suffer from post-traumatic stress syndrome. They're both participants in a 52-week training program through Vancouver Island Compassion Dogs, an organization that partners veterans and dogs with training. We're basically learning everything that it takes to be a service dog and doing it together, which it's really making the bond between us that much stronger. The benefits of the training process are just the beginning. Having a service dog can be extremely valuable in many ways. We feed off each other, so if I'm anxious, he'll get anxious. And when he's calm, he calms me down. It's really, we work off each other a lot, more than a person would realize. We've been to part of the program for nine months now, and uh, it's probably the best thing that's ever happened to me. It's one of the best, uh, especially uh, she just enhances me. She makes me uh, uh, feel needed. She makes me feel loved. I had gotten Farah when she was eight weeks old, when I was in my uh, down and out, worst uh, possible uh, right place. Yeah. Come on, dance, dance. Her life has changed tremendously in the last couple of years for me. And it's all positive. And the program is not only life changing to the veterans, but also for the dogs that are rescued. He was left out, basically abandoned out in a trailer park. And he wasn't in the best of health. I mean. Him and three other dogs were basically starving to death. So uh, <laughs> there's a lot of parallels. I mean, he was forgotten by his people, and I kind of feel the same <laughs> in some respects. There is no government funding to Vancouver Island Compassion Dogs. They're a nonprofit charitable group currently run by volunteers. The average cost of training a dog and veteran team is about $10,000. 
but the organization is committed to making it free of any cost to the veterans. This might sound like I'm overstating, but I'm not. And I honestly think that this program and this dog has really saved my life, or at least made me want to continue to live it in, in a respect, you know, out in society and not all bottled up into myself. Community support is essential to continue to be able to offer this program to veterans who would benefit from a service dog. In Qualicum Beach, I'm Kelly Robinson. This was really a great clip and it is so heartwarming to see how those dogs create a tight bond with Craig and Blair. And by the way, no, this painting is not for sale. Usually I like to support North Island Wildlife Recovery Center, but this time I made it for Blair as I find him one of the most nicest persons I ever met. But if you want to support the Compassion Dogs, don't hesitate. Here is the address one more time. In the meantime, I set up a crown layer for the uniform. And I did a dark underlayer too for the legs and the belly and her back. I made it darker with a bit more dark grey, adding to the ochre tone. And let's give her a little tail. The technique is pretty easy. I never do straight lines in animals or furs or feathers. I keep on turning the brush, creating a rough brush stroke. And upon that, we can go in with some lighter brush strokes. Usually I always mix a bunch of ochre tones from light to dark, most of the time three or four or maybe five, so that I can improvise in between the colors. With a small round brush we can paint more light hairs coming forward to the light and don't forget to blend it in so now and then with the fluffy brush. Let's start with a left front leg. From here we can do the same techniques. We start with a dark tone and create a wild brush stroke as the fur of Fara is pretty wild. A small filbert brush works great for a decent underlayer and watch the technique. I keep on moving, I never stop. And watch how I hold the brush. I lay it flat in my hand over my fingers. And this way we press the paint into the canvas. As this is a t TV show, we want fast results, so yes, I press the paint. And then go over it with, a, with the light hairs, with a tender touch. Probably I will give this portrait another 3 or 4 layers. As oil paint is a transparent pigment, the colors will get deeper after every layer. And to make the colors even deeper of tone, you can give the painting, when it's all dry, a wash with Allies and Crimson and a lot of medium. The medium, however, should be very liquid. And you only can do this after a lot of practicing, maybe with an old painting you never use again. Allies and Crimson is a very beautiful transparent pigment. And the old Dutch masters used this a lot to deepen the overall colors of their paintings. It will give the painting a nice glance also, but it works the best on paintings with a lot of earth tones. And as you might know, these are burnt sienna, ochre tones and other brown and beige tones like we used in this painting. In a view, ever need some help with mixing colors or sketching, you're always welcome in our lesson center in Parksville. And as you might know, I love to donate paintings which I made for this show to the North Island Wildlife Recovery Center in Arrington, a lovely place to relax and watch all the animals who are recovering from accidents or who are there because of other reasons. Of course you will meet Ray and Knut and you can measure yourself with the size of beers 
or take a look in the baby room where the kids have a good time sweeping the floor with all kinds of locks. Or just walk around and relax and having a good time. And you might remember that I donated this owl to the recovery center a few months ago. Well, it was sold. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you so much for the support and we will go on. Let's give Vara a few highlights. We can do this with a highlight color and a small round brush. Take care that we have to move along with the direction of the fur. Most of the highlight is on the left side, but I want a bit more on the right side also. As this is a merry, friendly little doggy, I don't want dramatic, heavy shadows. We keep it all light, playful and bright, just as her character. We're gonna leave the furry part alone for a while, we will come back in it later. And now the nasty part of this painting are the rings, lashes, and the biggest challenge is the harness or uniform of the veteran assist dog. And because it's also very small, it's extra difficult, but with a small brush, a small round brush, we can set up a few rings with dark gray loosely and put up some highlights on it for the reflection. And we can do the same on the ring below. Later we can always come back into it. This is just a rough crowned layer. On the top of the reflection we can do a bit of a highlight. And it will make it more realistic. Then there is a kind of medial or square sign. And I think we can do this with a dark yellow or yellow U. With dark, with dark gray we can paint a little opening for the ring. And give it a dark frame. Later, when it's all dry, we can come back to put some letters into it. And yes, I know painting letters is a real nightmare on such a very tiny surface, just as the letters on our back. But no worries, it will all come good. Let's work a bit more on the rings to make them more round and realistic. Because of all the hairs, you hardly can see where it's going to. But it's getting slowly more the form which I had in mind. And I noticed that the corners of the square medial are round so that Farah cannot hurt herself when she's playing or walking or whatever she does. So let's change that right away with a bit of dark gray. Let's put more highlight on the fur. Just to let the front part of the body including the front leg come more forwards. Keep the brush strokes small because the hairs are short. We do a bit on the right leg also and maybe a bit on the hip too to make the hip more rounder. With the fluffy brush we can fade it in. Let's do the final touch. Honestly I am the worst character painter in the world and I spent a few hours of getting this stuff on her back. As the texture is a bit nasty, this can be a time consuming operation. Especially when it goes into a round curve and flows away in a certain perspective. I use a very thin round brush and no, you cannot do this wet and wet. You have to wait till the under layer is dry. And we can use a bit of light gray mixed with light ochre tone. And if you make a mistake, then yeah, you have to start all over again. Like me, three or four times. Yes, calligraphy is a special trait. I gave the painting another three layers to deepen out the colors. And I worked a full 17 hours on this. And that would take 34 episodes of painting the island and you will understand that it's just not possible. But you got the idea about the technique and one more thing, I gave Farah a lot of space above her head. And this will create the illusion that she is a small little doggy and she is. With a big dog like a Doberman, a Danish or a German Shepherd, you will give less space, let's say the size of a stretch 
out hand horizontally above the head. And this is a golden rule with doing portraits. Anyway, we had a lot of fun creating this portrait. And if you paint your dog, drop me a line and attach the picture. I love to see your creations. And remember, if you ever need some help, let me know. Enjoy until next time. Farah is all complete in full color, ready to run around and have some fun. I hope you liked it. Check out our website. Till the next time and keep on painting.